Okay, good afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm supposed to teach you my 40 years of experience in amblyopia. Huh? In 15 minutes. In 15 minutes. So if you don't understand a word, don't blame me. If you understand, well and good, but if you want to understand more, come and buy me a beer, I'll teach you. So all three options. I'll interrupt are, here. Only 40 years experience person can put in 15 minutes. A yeah. neophyte cannot. So you are the right person. Please go ahead. <laughs> I hope so. Where is that page down? I can't see. I have a problem with presbyopia also, which I thought I never had. Page down. No, it is not working. Which one? No. Oh, it's not working. It's not, not working. working. So it's not my fault. Oh, uh, it is. Oh, it suddenly, is. it has gone somewhere else. Come. Go to the second. So you need to know the definition of anything you know. Second slide, you, you have put it somewhere else, this slide. Come, come here, young man, come here. Now you need to know the definition of amblyopia. Amblyopia is being defined for a long, long time. Everybody keeps reading the same thing. Patient doesn't see anything. The uh, uh, doctor doesn't see anything and therefore amblyopia. This, this has been by heart without realizing any meaning of amblyopia. Okay, go to the second slide. Go back, okay. Okay, the old, this is forwards, right? This is backwards. Okay, so you need to know the proper definition of amblyopia and uh, you don't bring that ice cream thing uh, one minute earlier because you have wasted a lot of time. So you need to know the process of vision and uh, process of perception and you need to know the, what is the current management and you need to know whether it is treatable at all and what are the future trends in the management of amblyopia. The old definition has to die. Any old textbook, any old definition has to die. There is no alternative because as our knowledge improves, as our knowledge base improves, we realize that it is no longer the truth. That's what the, the Veda also say, that you put belief in something and you believe truly until you find a better truth. The truth is only a path. It is not the end. You can never reach the end of the truth. It's only a path. So have we defined amblyopia yet? Have we used all the modalities available for diagnosing and treating it? If you ask me, the, diagno the, the definition of amblyopia is a dustbin diagnosis. Because you rule out all other conditions, then only you can say, ah, this is, must be amblyopia with a problem in the brain. <laughs> Now, there are, although there are many causes for amblyopia like strabismus, anisometropia, high emetropia, and visual deprivation, the treatment for all these things by all us has been the same blind patch. Patch the eye. A child is not able to move with counting finger, patch the eye, hold the child and move around. We haven't said anything more than patch the eye. Four hours, six hours, we go on eloquently about four hours, six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. 26 hours of patching, etc. So it's meaningless. Although the uh, amblyopia is associated with a number of visual deficits like hyperacuity, shape perception, spatial interaction, contour integration, visual counting, reduced or absent stereopsis, and motion, motion processing. Now these things cannot be explained just by uh, V1 pathology. There must be a lot of problems ev everywhere in the brain in amblyopia. So how do I treat amblyopia? I need to have a good knowledge of the, the neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, neuropathology, and all the ophthalmic specialities before you diagnose and treat amblyopia. So that's why I'm going to teach you some basics. You don't have to get worked up about beyond certain point because it becomes big, too difficult to understand. Vision is a dichotomous process. There is a nasal retina, there is temporal retina starting from retina. Then it goes up to lateral geniculate body where there is nasal and temporal dichotomy again. Then it goes to the cortex and the lowest level where it goes to the cortex is V1. There are horizontal connections between all these pathways and there are bottom up impulses going from retina to the V1 and there are top down corticogenical impulses which I have now realized come right up to retina. Because of my instrument, I have realized the corticogenoclate pathway does not stop at LGB, but it comes down to the retina as well. I'll tell you more about it as we go on. 
Remember this, the so-called top-down impulses coming down from the corticogenical pathway modulate the retinal impulses, and these are what we are utilizing in treating amblyopia, which nobody has told you till today. In the lateral geniculate body, as I said, there is a strict segregation of right and left eye, not like the traffic in Bangalore or in uh, Mumbai, where anybody can drive in, in whichever direction they feel like. If the brain does that, everyone will be mad completely. So the impulses do not cross each other. They are strictly segregated at lateral geniculate body. P cells are segregated, M cells are segregated, and they go to different layers in lateral geniculate body. There is a reason why it happens. We'll go to that a little bit later. So if you look at this, uh, if you look at this picture, a few more things will become clearer to you. Now, why am I telling you all these things? Because you need to understand where is the problem in amblyopia. Is it in lateral geniculate body? Is it in the retina? Is it in occipital cortex? If it is in the occipital cortex, where is it? You can see here the, uh, the, the fibers cross and the nasal fibers goes to the opposite side, temporal fibers go to the ipsilateral side. Most of the macular fibers go to the lateral part of the occipital cortex and most of the magnocellular fibers go to the medial side of the occipital cortex. So the P cell has got a larger representation in the occipital cortex unlike the M cells in the retina. Now, if you look at, the, again, uh, the v, V1 area is the lowest level of the occipital cortex. And if you look at the occipital cortex, you see there are six layers, one, two, three, four, five, six, very simple to uh, remember. But if you look at it again more carefully, you realize that layer four has 4A, 4B, 4C. And layer 4C again has 4C alpha, 4C beta. Now, what is the function of all those layers? So many layers and so many variations are there. I'll tell you in a few seconds, and 80% of the cells in the cortex are binocular, and only 20% at the level of uh, uh, the level 4A and level 4B, they are monocular, and that's why it is called as uh, uh, striae generi, because there is a very strict segregation of the layers of the right and left fibers in that level. The 4C, 4B, and all, they are binocular. So if you look at that, LGN is not a simple realization. Only 30% of the impulses from the LGN goes to the cortex. If all the impulses from LGN go to the cortex, the brain gets thoroughly confused and short-circuited, and you start behaving like Papu. Now, after modification, it also receives the LGN also receives the corticogeniculate modulating fibers. These corticogeniculate modulating fibers rapidly send the impulses from LGN to V1 when they come down from occipital cortex or further right. So this is the classification, parvocellular, magnocellular. Parvocellular, magnocellular go to layer one, one and two ventrally, and the magnocellular go to three, four, five, six in the dorsal area. And it, Obviously, parvocellular occupies a larger area compared to the magnocellular cells. Now, they have a different function. The parvocellular cells ass assess what is called as what of vision, and the magnocellular cells assess the wear of vision. If the what and wear of vision are not properly controlled, then what happens is you will become like Ajit Agarkar. He, first time he saw the ball, but he didn't know what it was. He knew the position of the ball, but he didn't know it was a ball. So he got out for zero. Second time, he s knew what it was, but he didn't know where it was. So like that, he got himself out five times in the cricket for zero. That's because he had a problem with what and where of vision. Okay. So you need to know where is what and what is where. If you don't know, then you will have severe problems if you are walking around with your girlfriend when your wife is around. Or if you are walking around with wife when another wife is around. That is even a greater danger. Anyway, let us look at it. Six layers of the visual cortex, I have told you, A, B, C uh, in the layer four. The M fibers end in layer 4C alpha, and the P fibers end in layer 4C beta. There is a reason why God has diverged the functions of the various things, because the water of vision involves the size, the shape, the structure, the color, and the surface of the object, whereas the wear of the object is position and uh, movement of the object. However, these two are interconnected throughout the 
central nervous system, and that's what I have utilized in treating the amblyopia. Now, this is further ahead. The uh, V1 acts simply as a fast forwarding center. It doesn't analyze. It doesn't have the capacity to analyze. It will say escalate it and send it off to the higher center and say, you fellows analyze, I don't know what it is, and you tell me and then I'll take action accordingly. So they send it off to a number of centers, V2, V3, V4, mid-temporal, et cetera, et cetera, for further analysis from V1. Okay. Now, this is how the brain connection is. From occipital cortex, there is connection to every part of the brain. So once upon a time, four or 5,000 years ago, they said, Sarvendriyanam, Nayanam, Pradhanam, and it is so true. If you did not know, you will say, what nonsense is talking, some Sanskrit dead language. You don't know the language, you say, how can you say dead language? You understand my point. If you have, you must have confidence in what you have done, you must have confidence in your culture, in your upbringing, and in your, uh, in your uh, language. If you don't have, you end up talking in English, which has less meaning and less number of words. Okay, what happened? Uh, uh, mm, so this is the spaghetti junction of, isko kuch karo yaar, boss? Uh, okay, this is the spaghetti junction which you are seeing in V1. Now, what happens in amblyopia? In amblyopia, the vision in the one of the eye is reduced. Now, how do I know vision is reduced? By checking the vision. But what happens in the brain? In the brain, what happens is, when the patient fixates with the amblyopic eye, the biological oxygen level dependence scan shows reduced scan in V1. That means the, when you are fixing with amblyopic eye, the brain is not utilizing oxygen and so it doesn't want the blood. This is what happens in bold scan in amblyopia. Particularly in amblyo uh, in, in any scan if you do, if you are looking at the face of a girl, the oxygen consumption of the brain is more than if you are looking at the building, the oxygen consumption is much less. It, but if there are some girls like in uh, West Bengal chief minister, it will be less than the <laughs> less than the building. Okay, that apart. This is the PET scan of an amblyopic eye, which shows higher oxygen consum higher consumption or higher. They uh, they tag the thing fibrinogen and things like that, and PET scan also shows in amblyopia there is a reduced thing. Now, in amblyopia, what happens? This is a small eye. But it has an extensive change all over the brain because of a small eye. Small eye has a problem, but it has caused problems everywhere in the brain. So if this can cause everywhere problems in the brain, is amblyopia an eye problem or is it a brain, pro brain problem? You need to understand. So brain also can elicit certain reactions to control and to, to eliminate the problems created by the brain. I mean, problems created by the eye. So brain also tries its best. That's called as a process of emetropization. Now, from the eye, LGN, striated cortex, and extra striated cortex, all are affected in amblyopia because of a problem in the eye. Now, should we find a way more convenient, more result-oriented, and quicker method of treatment than months and months and years of patching of the eye. I would, I would find, should we, not, should we not utilize all the other technologies like bolt scan, PET scan, DTI scan, MRI scan, et cetera, et cetera, to see where is the problem instead of just blindly saying amblyopia past the eye. Amblyopia past the eye. So what I am presenting here is what is called as orthoptic from the cardiac medical devices. We have designed an instrument which utilizes the so-called top-down impulses coming down from the parietal lobe to the occipital lobe level for C beta. And that stimulates the fast forwarding of impulses from for C beta to the inferotemporal cortex for rapid analysis 
of the image. As I told you, if you remember, occipital cortex V1 is only a forwarding center. It does not do anything to the image, analysis of the image. But the parietal center, which has an attention center in the parietal area, parietal lobe, the attention center in the parietal lobe, in turn, sends the impulses down to the occipital cortex V1 layer 4C beta where P cells come. And uh, if the, uh, the images, if the impulses from the attention center come down to V1, one minute I have finished? Okay, so I'll take one minute. If the attention center in parietal lobe comes down to V1, before the bottom-up impulses from the retina reach V1, the fast forwarding of the impulses at V1 is produced up to 10,000 times by the top-down impulses. So the critical point is that the gamma impulses coming from retina to the V1 must come after or there should be a not a, a large gap between the gamma impulses and the alpha beta impulses coming down from the parietal lobe. And that leads to rapid improvement in vision uh, in children. Within 15 days, I've seen children with amblyopia improving to 6'6", adults age 55 improving to 6'6". So no age is exempt from treating amblyopia. Don't send the children home saying nothing can be done no treatment available. Please don't say that amblyopia can be treated. We have experience of over 150,000 patients, myself, and 50 other people who have bought uh, the machine based on my words. They are extremely happy with the machine. I think I'll stop at that. You can copy the, uh, all these things improve in amblyopia patients. You can copy my email if you want. And success rate is around 95% in three to six months. I am an orthoptic graduate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, sir, for that illuminating talk.